Well, geez, singing, guitars. So you've been so serious until now, so let's sing a little bit, right? Everyone knows this song. Para bailar la bamba, para bailar la bamba, se necesita una poca de gracia, una poca de gracia para mi pati, allá arriba, allá arriba, allá arriba, allá arriba, por ti seré. Por ti seré, por ti seré. Come on, shake it up, baby, now. You're not singing. Okay, one more time. Come on, shake it up, baby, now. Twist and shout. Come on, shake it up, baby, now. Come on, working on now. You know you look so good. You know you look so fine. Come on and let me go now. Everyone knows this part. Ah, uh, come on, you can do better. Come on again. Ah, uh, para bailar la bamba. Para bailar la bamba se necesita una poca de gracia. Una poca de gracia pa' mi pati Allá arriba, allá arriba Allá arriba, allá arriba Por ti seré, por ti seré, por ti seré Bamba Okay, there you go. You wanted, you wanted a singer? Yeah, because it's live. Yes. Just walk away. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, my name is Gerardo Montoya. I'm from Mexico. I have to say that, well, I already said, um, English is my second language. Could be like my third one. And I'm trying to catch up with the Aussie slang watching Carl, what, what is this comedian? Carl uh, Barton. Carl Barton, you know that one, right? And, and, and like Aussie TV shows, like We Can Be Heroes, <laughs> you know? So yeah, still catching up. Um, today, I'm going to talk about my passion and how I found it and how I'm trying to keep going with it. And I'm going to talk about um, STEM education, which I want to convert into STEAM education and adding an extra A for arts. That's why I start singing for you, <laughs> right? Um, okay, let's begin. So the idea is STEM education. You know about the STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and I put an extra A there that is maths, okay? And it's not something very new. We always had a STEM education, always, all the time. You remember that guy, he was kind of famous, Leonardo da Vinci? <laughs> kind of famous, right? Kind of famous. But he was everywhere. You know, he was an inventor, a painter. You know, he was aware about everything. And I think arts, the extra A, can give us that. You know, because arts is maths. Right? If, if I want to teach tempo, I start teaching like dancing, you know? But we always like at the back of a classroom, something like this, right? Can you know the difference? 1840 and education today? Can you know the difference? 
It's almost the same. Two centuries. And almost the same. And that type of education had a meaning on those days. You know what happened in 1840? Industrial Revolution. Yeah? That's actually not a classroom. It's a cigar company. But what we have today, can you see the difference? Yeah? I'm Mexican, all right? And when I heard Donald Trump saying, oh, stop those Mexicans to come to America, they're taking our jobs. I was like, are you serious? <laughs> We're not taking your jobs. Robots are. <laughs> and I'm a mechatronics engineer. I make robots, I build robots. You know, I know about it, yeah? So why, if manufacturing changed that much, we can't change education? Nowadays, the education as we know it has no meaning. In that time, we needed to um, absorb all the information that we can. But we have all the information in our pockets now, in our cell phones, computers. We have access to all the information that we want. Now the problem is that we don't even know what to do with that information. We don't even know who we are ourselves, right? Because there's no inspiration. I got a career. I've been teaching for many, many years. And um, when I came up with this STEM education, I was like, STEM education has been part of my life, my entire life. I used to be a um, Boy Scout. And STEM education is about doing and solving problems, but real problems, not the ones that comes in a book, no real problems, making education meaningful again, right? Um, I'm going to show you um, a few videos later. So as Donald, said, Donald Trump said, make education great again. Let's make education great again, meaningful. Maybe you. You have seen this challenge before. Have you seen it before? No? You got the answer? No? Maybe? I'm going to put the answer. OK, you got it? You need to link the dots with just four straight lines. All right? How is that cool? Did I make it? Did I solve it? Yeah? One, two, three, four. How's this thinking cool? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thinking outside of the box. Thinking outside of the box. But what? What's the meaning of outside of the box? Well, that was literally, right? <laughs> Thinking outside of the, the box. OK. I'm going to put you uh, a video. Um, when I started with this project, I was teaching maths. It was teaching just five hours a week in this university. And um, I've, been, I've been always aware about social problems. Uh, 
back in Mexico, uh, I, I used to live in Cancun. Does anyone have heard about Cancun? Yeah? Okay. So you have an idea about Cancun, right? Um, but, but we have this big indigenous community there, Mayans. And um, unfortunately, they're a minority. And um, they're afraid about speaking their own language. Um, sometimes um, they, they suffer racism in Mexico. Um, they, they don't think they, they got the, the correct skin color. Um, and to be honest, they, they cannot find a job easily. Does that sound familiar for you? Maybe, maybe it's just in, in a third world country like my, my country, right? That sounds really bad. Uh, we can say it um, in a continuous development country, right? But yeah, I mean, we're very similar. You've lost more because we still have the Mayan language, yeah? But you have the same community with the aboriginals. And even when the government helps them to survive, the future for those little kids is drugs, more in Mexico, join to a cartel, and probably going to jail. That's the future. And that's happening in Cancun. When I started with, with this young kids and I started teaching them robotics, um, I got like a pamphlet and it said like, oh, sign up for a robotics contest. But it was Cancun, come on. It's not known for technology. It's known for nightclubs and beautiful beach. No, but not for technology. And there were not even one school that teaches technology itself. So I came up with this big challenge. I even had to teach them how to use a driver and a spanner, you know? But I saw the rules and, and for me, those rules were like very fair because it was basically a challenge. Uh, it's called Bex Robotics Competition. They give you a challenge, and they give you a box with a bunch of tricks inside, and you have to assemble your own robot, design your own robot. But the same tricks that comes in that box are the same tricks that the people in Japan will get. And the same in America, in New Zealand, everywhere. Same rules. You got the challenge, you got the box of tricks, and you got your brain. And you have to solve the challenge. So the next video is about thinking out of the box. Just think about how you will design a robot who can climb a ladder. OK? Again, design a robot, that was one of the challenges, that can climb a ladder in less than a minute. All right? This is the solution that we came up. Did you come up with that idea? Set off? 
That gave us the first place worldwide in design against the MIT, the University of Tokyo, the University of New York. And it was just a bunch of kids from a Mayan community. That even, like, <coughs> Spanish is their second language. They had no idea about English, and they had to explain to the panel how they, they did it. And we're like, uh, 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 motor, uh, uh, you know? <laughs> they didn't know how to explain it. But then they went back to Mexico, and they started learning English. I told you at the beginning that I will tell you about my passion. And my passion is about to inspire other people. Sometimes we say, like, oh, I have this idea about to change the world, but it's just myself. But I truly believe that every single human has the power to convince other people or to inspire other people. So, I'm just going to do like a, the, the super quick pitch. About the, the idea that we have here in, in Australia. We're using um, plastic waste to make prosthetics. And that's our goal, leave this world in better conditions than we found it. So the idea is use the, that plastic like your water bottles there, that can be a finger, yeah? And change other people's life using rubbish, basically. So if you want to be part of it, just let me know and I will tell you how. Thank you.